Welcome to Haxby Shed. It's been a few days and a haircut since I posted the video on parallel turning. And really, I wanted to start by saying thank you very much for your comments. Everybody's been very, very helpful. I've had a lot of suggestions. Those of you who know a lot more than I do have been very kind and not pointed out my um, lack of knowledge too much. Um, so I'd just like to come back and address some of the points that you've said and do a couple more tests, which will be really quick actually. This will only be a short video. But first, I just want to explain something to people who perhaps are at my stage of development, as opposed to people who are you know, now masters at their craft already. Here I'm showing the two possibilities where the tailstock is out of line with the headstock. So in the top diagram, the tailstock is towards the operator, and in this diagram, the tailstock is away from the operator. And in both cases, the work, which is green, is out of line, and the result in both cases is that it will turn a taper, as long as you take off enough material, of course, to um, skim the whole surface. So this is the result, a tapered bar. And as you clock it here, if you zero the clock here and move it along to the left, then this is going to read low. This distance will have decreased, obviously, because of the taper. Now then, what was throwing me was this. I concluded that the saddle was somehow moving towards the centre. But I was looking at the wrong end of the telescope, let's say. What was really happening was the work was moving closer to the tool post. Now what threw confusion into this was I do have bed wear and I was getting also some barrelling in the middle. Now the barrelling might have been because I was using a carbide tool which uses more pressure than let's say high speed steel tools and it might have been pushing the work away a little bit in the centre there. So in my case the difference between here and here in the diameter of the bar start to finish is about 1.5 thou. Now all things being equal that might mean that the tailstock is out of line by three quarters of a thou. I won't be doing anything about that right now it's too cold I'll maybe look at it again in the summer but I hope for those of you who were at my stage of development that helped. So this is as we finished the parallel turning test video. I want to say that when I had tried to turn towards the tailstock we got the chattering it's not clear from the video, but I did use a right hand tool. I didn't really try too hard to get that to work. And because I was running this dead center with only a light pressure, that could have easily been the cause of the problem. So I'll return to the question of turning towards the tailstock in some future video, because I want to try that out and see if I can get that working properly. A couple of people suggested that I clock off the top of the test bar. And that might tell me something about bed wear relative to the centre heights or it might tell me something about the relative centre heights between the headstock and the tailstock. Let's see what happens. Now that's moved right onto the gap block and we know the gap block is out a bit and that's reading about one hundredth of a millimetre which is half a thou near enough. And then if I move back to where the gap block starts, somewhere about there, and we can see that reading, it is it's much the same, to be honest. I really didn't know what to expect, but just a rise of half a thou between the tailstock and the headstock is as good as I could have hoped for, I think. This was another test suggested to me, with the Morse taper of the test bar in the tailstock here, setting up the dial on the tool post and just checking what the deviation is, whether the test bar is straight that way or that way. So here goes. Okay, the needle's moved off about three one hundredths of a millimeter, slightly more, so about 1.3 thou. And it's closer at this end, so the test bar is moving over towards the wall there. 
and if I release the clamp it has almost no effect at all. Well that brings us to the end of the short update. Thanks very much for the comments. I've usually got several projects on the go at any one time that might turn into videos and some of you will have seen my video where I made a transparent lid for this lathe and there was questions about whether or not my oil was too thick and it's actually uh, ISO 68, the modern equivalent to Telus 33 hydraulic oil and I am coming around to the idea that it is too thick and uh, I followed the lead shown by Double Boost and I bought some of this Royal Purple Max gear and I've been messing about with a pump and uh, let's say that's under development it might feature in another video in the future. So, I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacks Be Shared.